Welcome to the In My Opinion Show with Ronald Barry Robinson and Friends. See on the internet 24 hours, 7 days a week. To view us on the internet, simply go to and type in, in I mean, and, and, and type in in capital letters RBRIMO to view our, uh, our shows and our catalog of, of shows. You can also view the In My Opinion Show on Flint Comcast Cable Channel 17 every Saturday at 6 and every Wednesday at 8.30. You can also view the In My Opinion show on Detroit, uh, Michigan, Comcast Cable Channel 68, seven days a week. I want to welcome this great panel that we have assembled here. We have Miss Denise Smith-Allen. Hi, Ronald. Hi. Hi. We have Miss Jackie Williams. Hi, Ronald. Hi, Hi. everyone. And we have Mr. Henry Hatter. Hi, Ron and Jackie and uh, <coughs> Miss Denise. And congratulations on your daughter, uh, granddaughter. granddaughter, being graduated from Howard University, one of the best universities in the whole country. Thank you. And you also, Jackie, for your daughter, my son, your son graduating from college. What great legacies we're creating here on this, on this show. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank, Thank you. you. And congratulations. My congratulations goes out to everybody too, and you especially, uh, our millions of viewers worldwide. Let's talk about SCOTUS, Supreme Court of the United States. Affirmative action ban dashes hopes of black minority students. The conservative majority of the Supreme Court of the United States on Tuesday issued a final ban on affirmative action in Michigan in response to a ruling from the U.S. Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals in Cincinnati, which overturned the ballot initiative, Michigan Civil Rights Initiative, otherwise known as Pro Proposal 2, that banned affirmative action in the state. The court basically upheld the ban in Michigan. In 2006, the ballot question banning affirmative action passed by a margin of 58 to 42, noting that the University of Michigan, Michigan State University, Wayne State University, and any other public college or university shall not discriminate against or grant preferential treatment to any individual or groups on the basis of race, sex, color, ethnicity, or national origin in the operation of public employment, public education, or public contracting. The majority opinion written by Justice Anthony Kennedy argued that the case challenge, challenging affirmative, affirmative action was not about race admissions, but rather a question of what rather voters have the ability to, to ban race preferences. Concurring with Kennedy were Chief Justice Roberts, uh, Scalia, Thomas, and Breyer. Justice Elena Kagan recused herself from the case. Justice Sonia Sotomayor, Sotomayor, the first Hispanic on the highest court joined by Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, wrote a powerful dissenting opinion underscoring the history that Inform, that informs minority of participants in the political process and the constitutional guarantees that come with it. While our Constitution does not guarantee minority groups victory in the political process, it does guarantee them meaningful and equal access to the process. It, it guarantees that the majority may not win by stacking the political process against minority groups, permanently forcing the minority alone to surmount unique obstacles in pursuit of its goals. Here, educational diversity that cannot reasonably be accomplished through race-neutral measures, she wrote. U.S. Congressman John Conyers, Jr., from Detroit, the highest-ranking Democrat on the House Judiciary Committee, issued a statement in the wake of the, of the U.S. Supreme Court decisions upholding the ban on affirmative action. He says today, he says the decision continues a, a, tr a troubling line of recent Supreme Court decisions that are hostile towards our history of civil rights and our struggle for equality. It is unfortunate that this court 
allowed proposition proposal to to over run the intent of the constitution's equal protection clauses pertaining protecting disadvantaged minorities from discrimination conyers said the blatant unfairness of this approach was highlighted by the sixth circuit in their opinion striking down proposal two stating that while sons and daughters of alumni and children of big donors are afforded those non-merit considerations in the admission process proposal two would require a minority student to convince the michigan electorate to to amend its constitution in an extraordinarily expensive process and the most or arduous of all the possible channels for change conyers quoted justice sotomayor mayor saying the constitution does not protect racial minorities from political defeat, but rather does it give the majority free reign to erect selective barriers against racial minorities. She wrote, the political process doctrine ensures that the majority, when it, when it wins, does so without rigging, does so without rigging the rules of the game to ensure its process. Well, I have to agree with both of them, okay. Um, I think the citizens of Michigan was duped with this uh, this idiot from uh, California, uh, Ward Carnley. Okay, he caught he brought this uh, this lie to the citizens. It was called the uh, Michigan Civil Rights Initiative. Okay, the wording on the ballot had voters thinking it was a good thing, but the reality this initiative was horrible for colleges in Michigan. Now that the damage has been done, this Uncle Tom Ward Con Connolly has faded into obscurity. What's your thoughts, uh, Denise? <laughs> wow. Well, you've shared a lot of, uh, of information, but, you know, when I um, heard the uh, ruling, unfortunately I was not surprised that the ruling would take uh, the shape that it did, seeing that we are living in such a... Um, uh, conservative mindset and I guess one of the things that troubled me of course is being uh, a U of M alumnus because I feel very saddened that um, again the stack the deck is being stacked uh, against some uh, students that may have had um, uh, the ability to get in um, compared to other students they may still have fallen short in an area or two and maybe the, the race barrier may have been uh, an issue that could have kind of leveled the playing field. And I think it was alluded to in the article about uh, preferential treatment, if you will, that is given to um, uh, alumni of uh, not just historical uh, colleges, but colleges of the elite. And, and it is, it's troubling because, again, we're still dealing with a double standard. And, you know, if it's going to be a double standard, then it either is going to be all the way across the board or it's not going to be. And, I mean, that's just the way it is. And I was troubled, too, because I was looking at uh, some information that I saw on, from the New York uh, Times where it talks about, for example, uh, Berkeley um, and how um, the schools that have fared since the affirmative action ban. And looking at Berkeley, for example, 49% of the student college age uh, residents of Hispanics, it's 49%. And enrollment of uh, freshmen Hispanics is down to 11%. Okay, so that's troubling. And the same goes with uh, blacks living uh, in um, California going to school. 9% of the state college black residents are um, available to go to the school, yet only 2% are black freshmen and it goes on and on all the way through to various other schools and so there is a, um, a situation that I don't think is going to be corrected. Well at the University of Michigan from what I, under, uh, what I understand is four percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah yeah it is like I said across the board as I looked at this as, at this document Texas A&M, University of Texas, Michigan State, um, all of them there is just a, it's a troubling trend, a downward trend of blacks being admitted into these schools. And so, 
you know, it's just unfortunate. I'm sure others have comments too, so I'm not going to take up uh, any more time with this at this point. But I'm just saying it's a troubling trend. <clears throat> Henry, what's your thoughts? Well, <clears throat> um, I think it's a great thing. You know, I I think for the first time African Americans will get a chance to stand up on two feet and be counted. They don't have to be feel as though they're victimized by every nuance that comes across the table. They, and, and besides, we have traditional black colleges that are perhaps not to uh, rate with all of the traditional Ivy League colleges, but they're good colleges. They do the basic thing to meet the needs of black young people. And yet, they don't have affirmative action. We give the, we, the government gives affirmative action to wealthy, rich, traditional colleges, but none to, the en enable, to enable black colleges who struggle year after year just to try to, to make, uh, balance the budget. And yet, that seems to make no difference to traditional advocates for affirmative action. And I think that um, uh, people who go to black colleges, traditional black colleges, get considered first for jobs in the United States Army, for jobs in industry. I think government and traditional employees try to do their diligence to work with people who come out of traditional black colleges. They may not rise in all of the skill sets with all of the other universities, but there's something to be said about these black colleges because they keep our history, they keep us exposed to our history. They do great things by uh, training our kids and giving them a culture and preserving that culture for the next generation, but yet we don't see that. And yet other cultures do the same thing. It's not that I don't appreciate traditional colleges because I graduated from one. I did not graduate from a black college. But I still think that they serve a great purpose in the nation and in the culture. Jackie, what's your thoughts? You're from, <coughs> you graduated from my school. Right, Alabama black State college. University, yes. <laughs> well, um, Actually, well, I thought we were in 2014 when we had choices. So back in the day, we didn't have a lot of choices, but now we have opportunities. So if I decide to go to Alabama State University, that's a choice. But if I decide to go to University of Michigan, that's a choice. So it's nice to have choices. Mm -hmm. Before, we had to do what we had to do. But the difference is, back when, like, I might have been the first person um, on my mother's side to attend college. So I don't have people that had graduated and were alumni of University of Michigan. So I don't have that admittance. You know, I don't have that in my favor. So I won't get that check. So that won't be checked on my application. Mm -hmm. So I'll be overlooked for that. So other people that have their parents that are alumnus of Michigan State and University of Michigan, they will have that. So that's not fair because I don't have that leveling tool. It's not that I'm not a good student. What affirmative action said was, I want you to look and make sure you're evaluating all of the students and make sure that it's not just the white students that are coming forth, but it's also some black students because I know there's some intelligent ones. It's not that you're handing me anything because my GPA is speaking for itself. You're not giving me anything. I've already done my work. I did my due, due diligence. I did that. What I'm saying is that I need to go and what we have to do is make sure that you're being fair and you're not just getting all your friends in and all their friends and all their nephews in and then I'm being overlooked. That's all that did. It didn't give me any extra scholarship. It didn't do anything extra. It just made sure that you're being fair to me where I'll have a chance to go. Well, what would you say to a white male? who says affirmative action denied me the same opportunity that you say had going to white choices that given you. Slavery you locked us up. Uh, 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 hold it. <laughs> Slavery's gone. It's 
may be gone, but white and privilege, yet, white privilege has not gone. Slavery white, in privilege, our heads. white privilege has not gone. And so many times, often, as as Jackie alluded to, there were schools that we were not even privileged to go to. Well, based that was on then. Sin. No, but that listen, was, she this says is you it. have choices now. You have choices, but I'm talking about in our lifetime. In our lifetime, yeah. we saw where people were trying to go to school and, and they were marshaled. Just say that you lost this argument. No, how, why would I say that? What do you no, say to the white male? No, so, no, because as far as I'm concerned, you brought, in, you brought in the idea. You were talking, we were talking about affirmative action, yeah, okay. and then you brought in the whole issue of uh, black schools. To yeah. me, this is a whole other discussion. No, okay? it isn't. But it, but it's, it, it may be a part of it. Why does affirmative action apply to black schools? Because the, money. The, money, the money, the money, the money is a whole, look, you've got three arguments going on now. Okay. You've got three, okay, because if you follow the money, you're going to always see those schools that are, uh, the elitist schools are going to have the money. They're going to have the power base, okay, so if you want to level the playing field, that goes back to affirmative action as far as the doling out of budgetary items, such as schools. So, like I said, you've kind of you've kind of clouded this issue. The issue is what happened with with the Supreme Court and how it affected these public schools, these public schools. And right now, it is not faring well for those people who are not those privileged individuals who do not have in, 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 uh, families who have gone on to the school. I submit to you that you are privileged. You graduated from the University of Michigan. You can get the same benefits that all other graduates get. Your kids can have. Uh, opportunities to attend uh, by supplementary funding as do white privileged people do. Oh, well, I disagree with that. Well, I anybody who graduates that. from a, a, one of those colleges where you say uh, affirmative, uh, whites have the affirmative action mm -hmm. because they graduated from these colleges and they give special privileges to their kids and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. you're one of those persons that's graduated from one of such colleges. Listen, let me, let me just share with you um, today, as I printed this <laughs> off, okay, Michigan College Admission fights for, for uh, the fight is over. And again, this is from the Detroit uh, Press. And um, here was a statement, and I was so um, dis disturbed by it, I had to respond. Okay, and this is an individual, I won't call his name, he knows who he is, but it says, um, Basically, he, he, he gives his name. He says, sure, let's have a hip-hop dance off to see who gets in. A hip-hop dance to see who gets in school. He's talking about admissions, okay? My response to him, to him was, I'm an alumnus of U of M, MPA, 3.7 average, and find comments like these racially demeaning but predictable. Hip-hop dance off? Really? White kids are as good as his High as edu black. Higher education is supposed <laughs> to increase our ability to understand both sides of the issue and intelligently engage in discourse. However, my experience continues to confirm that you can't change what's in a person's heart. And that was my response to him. You know, this is the discourse. Now, here you have students who are still, these are people who are going to be leaders, but yet, they come well, off that's with not a trend. That's an incident. It is a trend. It is this, a trend. No, it's a no, trend. No, there trend, were other. No. Listen, there were other people who were responding. I just happened to respond to but that individual. Do, this other person. There were other people who were. There talking. are other people who feel very strongly about affirmative action for black individuals. Many black, many white people feel the same way. This it's, is who I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm talking about. But you have. There's, just because one or two people feel that way doesn't mean that they all feel the same way. They wrote some books. It was on um, The View. They wrote some books. It was two people from um, Harvard that wrote some books yes. because they felt like the, um, affirmative action it. had ruined their lives. Right. Uh -huh. who, who wrote those books? I don't remember who they I can look it up. Yeah, but it's something about the bell-shaped curve and all the rest of that. I remember that argument. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. because Whoopi Goldberg was talking about it, and what it was saying was that, you know, they were saying that when you make a decision, you might not feel the full effect of the decision until years later. Mm -hmm. And, like, those reports, those reports were not available right away. It, that data is steady collecting. Do you feel that you graduated based on affirmative action or did you do it on your own? Uh, there, are, there are four of us who are college graduates. Which one of you were affirmative action? 
Henry, don't cloud the issue. I'm not that. clouding it. I just want to know, and the audience wants to know too. Did we do it on our own, or did we uh, have to? Have, I think uh, I think the opportunity by. the opportunity to go to schools of, uh, as we talked about, as far as choice is concerned, was based on affirmative action. The fact that our forefathers fathers fought for civil rights, so we can vote, and all of this other stuff that is. A, a part of this whole process that allowed us the ability to have choice. And so basically what the, the thing is going on now is that the clock is going backwards. Right. They're setting the stage for things to be, because I'm telling you, we have a, a, a fearful nation, yes, a, very, a very yes, fearful we nation, we because they understand the demographics are changing. And based on that, they are putting in place mm -hmm. laws and everything else to limit access, because Control wants to maintain control. Uh, that'll never happen. By 2050, we'll have the paradigm shift to African Americans and Hispanics will be the arithmetic and, and, uh, and uh, numerical majority of this country. And but they the will rules control. will be the oh, rule is. Just a minute. They will decide in a democracy, the majority of the people decides what the laws are. But they'll and have to undo gotta, the laws. Yeah, the but, laws but, are in place but now. What we need to do is prepare our kids how to function in that area. And here we're still fighting, uh, wallowing in slavery and stuff like that. Slavery happened a long time ago. We've got to change the paradigm set and get our kids ready to rule the world, not to wallow in slavery and subserviency. Sorry, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> You're gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Went. <laughs> You know, you can go, I mean, I understand your, well, no, I don't, but <laughs> I respect that you have a point. Mm -hmm. I respect You know, that. and everybody knows that that red paradigm shift is coming. The paradigm shift is coming, but the laws that are That's in place right. now, you know. If we we got to live right now. We you, have to live right we now. We are living right now. You're, no, we're, you're we're, probably we're, living better, you're living probably better than 90% of the other people in the United States. Says who? You. Look at you. you you're well, both of you and your husband work, and you're probably all above $100,000 a year. My gosh. Yeah, and, uh, you, you only have to be $100,000 okay. to be in uh, 1%. It's election year. Okay. Gee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that intelligent discourse that we are having as uh, college well, graduates, yeah, right? That's right. Okay. Uh -huh. But we can agree to disagree. We can agree because I'm telling you, you better history. know your history so yes. that you don't repeat your history. That's right. Yeah. Okay? Oh, well, you know, a stroke true. of a pen could put you right back in chattel slavery. That's not like Don't be happened. fooled. No, 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 You're no. looking too far back to slavery. Look, look. look. I'm telling look you. Ahead. When we are in... We need to look ahead. we join others to control. We, we need to look ahead, but we if also need to... If you don't look to, ahead, you, you're likely to be under somebody's foot. You need to look ahead, but you also need to know your history. You need to know where you came from, and a lot of people don't. History. People don't appreciate what the struggle was to get no, where we're at, and, and some of us don't even appreciate we it as we sit back. at this table. There are some things <laughs> worth dying for. We will never go back, I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to look ahead and seize our opportunities that's opening up for us. Uh -huh. Not fight against them, but learn how to control, learn how to evaluate and build systems, not tear down systems. The 20th century, 21st century is a history, the century that belongs to a multicultural majority in this country. Not when you keep getting decisions from the highest You're court in the country. You're going again back in the Yeah, you're All going right. backwards. Well, yeah. 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 The decisions, the decisions are going backwards. Back. The decisions are going backwards. Back. 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 The pendulum is going back this but way, Henry. But the trends are more favorable to the paradigm shift being favorable to African Americans and minorities. But what? What? But, but what's happening That's right like now you guys is still want to wallow in the they pain. are putting Somebody up wallowing. barriers. They're, they are creating and making laws. <laughs> All right, that 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 for the time being are going to be are going to be insurmountable for that paradigm shift you talk about in 2050. But are the laws right? made by the majority of the people? Well, shit, you what can't you, you can't prove it by me. Look, 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 look. <laughs> the laws be made by the majority. Look at here in Michigan. Say, oh, all right, no, we want the minority. All right, we knocked down. We the voters 
knock down uh, 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 the EMS. I mean, the emergency managers. What does he need to do up in Lansing? All right? No. Nope. Mm -mm. Threw some other shit in the mix. So, the majority of the people in Michigan voted, and they said we don't want it from Michigan because they were hoodwinked. Yeah. By your buddy, how, by your buddy from, you uh, from from California. People? You got to call them stupid to be hoodwinked. Well, they, by they changing the language, taking people. the language, by the taking language. the language. So a person who read that ten million people in Michigan are hoodwinked. Because they're stupid. No, you saying that. No, no you no, said. No, no, I'm not saying a person is stupid. Me. No, because of the language. The language. Right. When you talk about affirmative action, there's a thought process. That means we're leveling the playing field. We're going to do the right thing. When they put that language together, it didn't mean that. That intent was not there. They wanted to dismantle it right. instead of affirm it and make it right. No. Uh -uh. Well, Michigan Civil Rights Initiative. I mean, hey, if I... Civil didn't know issues. any better. I may have voted for that foolishness too. Mm -hmm. But once you look at it, all right, and read what it was about, most people just go to the polls to vote. They just reacted. Okay. Sure they did. And he reacted they, in the wrong and, way. Uh, well, I don't know. I, and the wordsmiths. I would knew like that. to see. I would the like word to see minority that. stand up uh, once and for all without having to wallow a stoop. Or to be given, or to be feel victimized. Everything's victimized. Black I folks victimized. aren't asking people to give them give them something. Has nobody ever given me shit? <laughs> I am not victimized. Right. I don't want to be seen as okay. victimized. Everything I've got, I've got on my own. All right, went to school. Okay, paid my own way. Mm -hmm. That's right. what I want to hear. Okay, That's but see, the mean. thing is, is is that uh, uh, there's not enough of us in these Ivy League colleges. All right, well, to, yeah, make, to make well, whatever colleges, not not just uh, uh, black colleges, but but University of Michigan and other and other places. All right, to lead, to have that legacy thing. But anyway, this has been a great conversation. <laughs> all right, well, you give up, right? No, no, no not no, at all. No, this no, is, no, this no, is no, to be no, continued. Cave no. in. That's a good uh, uh, this, no. this is Ronald, this is Ronald Barry Robinson and friends. Until next time, stay focused.